Grace and peace, everyone. Today is Sunday, January 9th, 2022. Welcome to the Christ Fellowship Baptist Church Sunday School Meeting, where our pastor is the Reverend Dr. David L. Kelly II. My name is Dolores Gerald, and I am your facilitator for this meeting. We meet every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. If you would like more information about our church, please visit our website at www.ChristFellowshipBaptistChurch.com. Dot org. Our lesson today is in, entitled, Hagar and Ishmael are not forgotten. It is taken from Genesis chapter 21 verses 8 to 21. Uh, so get your Bibles out and let us pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you, Father, for this brand new day, for the brand new mercy you gave us in this day. Father God, we thank you for life, health, strength. We thank you for eyes to see and ears to hear, hands to do and feet to go, and the breath to say thank you. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us and our family right now, Father God. We ask right now, Father, that you forgive us of anything we've said or done or thought that wasn't pleasing in your sight. Father... We ask right now that you come into the midst of this meeting, that you prepare every eye, every ear, every heart, every mind to receive whatever this Holy Spirit has for us today. I ask a blessing on every family represented here, every person who thought it not robbery to get up and come seek your face this morning. I ask a special blessing on my church family at large, on my pastor, Father God, on every pastor that's represented here in this meeting right now, Father God. I ask right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you hide me behind the cross that I might not be seen. I will sit down, Holy Spirit. You stand up and do the teaching. I've done the preparation, but I'm not always able, Father God. Give me clarity of speech that I might be able to speak and your people might be able to understand and receive. And we ask all of these blessings and many more in the matchless name of Jesus, Yeshua, our Savior. Amen. 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 Oh, grace and peace, everybody. Uh, Anita has said that she will read. So, Anita, whenever you are ready, unmute and read. And the child grew and was waned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was waned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham. I'm sorry, Abraham mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, cast out this bond woman and her son for the son of this bond woman shall not be heir with my son even with Isaac and the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son and God, and God said unto Abraham let it not be grievous in the sight because of the lad and because they, they bond woman and all that Sarah hath said unto thee her hair can unto her voice, for in Isaac shall they seed be called. And also of the son of the bondwoman will I make a nation, because he is thy seed. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child and sent her away. And she departed and, and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the bottle. And she cast the child under one of the shrubs. And she went and sat her down over against him. I'm sorry, it just looked funny here. And she went and sat her down over against him a good way off, as it were a bow shot. For she said, let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lift up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad. And the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of she, I'm sorry, of the lad which he is. Arise, lift up the lad and hold him in thine hands, for I will make him a great nation. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink. And God was with the lad, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. 
Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Anita. Okay. This is a story that some of us may or may not be familiar with. This is the story of Hagar and Ishmael. All right. Now, um, just for the sake of clarity, I'm going to tell the whole story. Just for the sake of clarity, I'm going to tell the whole story. Okay. So, Today's lesson is about the saga, the saga of Hagar and her son Ishmael and some background on Hagar. Hagar was the Egyptian servant of Sarai. Um, I went digging y'all and you know, I do some digging and um, I have the book of Jasher, which is mentioned in scripture many times. And so I went to Jasher to get this, um, to get this story because Jasher gives a lot more detail than Genesis does. And in the book of chapter, in the book of Jasher, in chapter 15, it says that Hagar was the daughter of Pharaoh by one of his concubines, and that he gave her to Sarai as a handmaid when Pharaoh sent Abram away after his household was plagued on account of Pharaoh taking Sarai from Adam, I mean from Abram, telling Hagar that it would be better for her to be a handmaid in Abram's household than a mistress in his because of the evil that fell on his household on account of Sarai. This is the same account with less details given in Genesis 12, verses 10 through 20. And then in Joshua chapter 16, it says that this is the handmaid that Sarai gave to Abram as wife. As wife, not as a concubine, as wife, to conceive a child for her. Now, Genesis 16 has the same account. In Genesis 16, verses 1 to 4, there's the account of Hagar given as wife, again, not a concubine, wife, to Abram by Sarah, that Hagar conceived for Abram, that Sarai was despised in the eyes of Hagar. And then in Genesis 16, verses 5 and 6, that Sarah dealt harshly with Hagar, and that Hagar fled from Sarai to the wilderness. (sighs) This indicates that although Hagar was taken as a wife, that she was still considered a servant. Next in Genesis 16, 7 and 8, there is the wilderness. She's in the wilderness by a spring of water. And there Hagar meets the angel of the Lord. And the angel of the Lord made a promise to her concerning her unborn son. He tells her, return to your mistress and submit yourself under her hand. And then he tells her, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly so that they shall not be counted for the multitude. That was a promise that he gave her. Then he told her, you shall call his name Ishmael because the Lord has heard your affliction. And Ishmael's name means God will hear. Then Hagar called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. For she said, have I also seen him? Who seen me? And she named that place where she encountered the Lord, Bear Lahai Royai, which means well of the living one who sees me. Side note, this is the first time that somebody names God in the Bible. And it happens to be a black woman, y'all. And <laughs> glory be to God. All right. So now, next part of, of uh, Hagar's story. In Genesis 16, in Genesis 16, verses 15 and 16, it goes on to state, Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram named his son, whom Hagar bore, Ishmael. Now, I want everybody to keep in mind that although Hagar has the title of wife, she had none of the status, none of the rights, and none of the privileges that that title brings. She didn't even have the same rights as a concubine which would have so, elevated her above the station of servant. Any questions question. about that? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I have a question. Mm-hmm. So Hagar was the product of um, an adulterated relationship? No, Hagar was the daughter of Pharaoh by a concubine. She was Pharaoh's daughter. She was an Egyptian. She was Pharaoh's daughter. Okay. Okay. No, what you you look you still look confused. You're getting two different things mixed up. <laughs> Got it? 
Now, Dolores, she asked you if the um the relationship was an ad- adultery. That's what she's asking you. Whose relationship? Hagar and Abraham. No, it wasn't because she was not his daughter. She was not. She was not his daughter. She was not related to him in any way, shape, fashion, or form. She was Sarah's servant. Okay. All right. Now. Okay. So now what happens in Genesis 17 and then in Genesis chapter 18 verses 1 to 15 is the prelude or the 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 next person, the next part in the next chapter of Hagar and Ishmael Sega. It is here that the Lord appeared to Abram and changed his name to Abraham. He gave Abraham the covenant of circumcision and he changed Sarai's name to Sarah. The Lord told Abraham that he would give him a son by Sarah. In Genesis 17, verses 17 and 18, it says, Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born to a man who is 100 years old? And shall Sarah, who is 90 years old, bear a child? And then Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. God's response in Genesis 17, 19 and 20 was, No, Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his descendants after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. He shall beget 12 princes and I shall make him a great nation. That's the second time a blessing was spoken over Ishmael. All right. Then we get to Genesis 18 verses 1 to 8 and is the account of the Lord appearing to Abraham a second time to tell him that his wife Sarah will give him a son. Genesis 18, 9 to 5 reads and follow. Then they said to him, where is Sarah, your wife? So he said here in the tent, and he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife shall have a son. Sarah was listening at the tent door, but behind him. Now, Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age. And Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I've grown old, old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? And the Lord said to Abraham, Why does Sarah laugh? Saying, Why shall I surely bear a child since I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. And he said, No, but you did laugh. Here's where... The issues start. Now we have the interlude to the next chapter of Hagar and Ishmael's saga because all of these things affect them. We're in Genesis 21 where our lesson is today and verses 1 to 7 read as follow. And the Lord visited Sarah and he had as he had said and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken and Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him and Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him whom Sarah born to him Isaac. And then Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old as God has commanded him. Now Abram was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah said, God has made me laugh, and all who hear will laugh with me. She also said, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? For I have borne him a son in his old age. Okay, now we start. I want you to understand now at this point, Hagar has the title of wife with no privileges. She has the eldest son, the firstborn son of Abraham. All right. When, when when Ishmael was born, Abraham was 86. When Isaac was born, Ishmael was now 14. All right? When Isaac was born, Ishmael was now 14. So Abraham's 100. Sarah's 90, 91. Ishmael is 14. All right? And so now we move on. Our lesson starts in verse 8. All right. And it says, so the child grew and was weaned and Abraham made a great feast on the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had born to Abraham, scoffing. Now, our lesson starts at the weaning of Isaac. 
Now, Isaac at this time would have been between two and four years old. So remember, Ishmael was 14 when Isaac was born. So he's either between 16 and 18 at this time. He's not a little boy. He's a, a, a teenager. Okay. Okay. Abraham, proud father that he was, gave a celebration in honor of his new son coming off the breast of his mother. And this was a cause of celebration because the child who was weaned has a stronger chance of survival. And in a society where infant mortality was high and many infants did not live to be weaned, weaning was indeed a great cause for celebration. It means the child was moving into the next phase of life. All right. And it was a great cause of cel celebration, especially for Abraham, who had the Lord's promise that Isaac was the fulfillment of the promise given to him for descendants as numerous as the stars of the sky. And as the celebration went on, Sarah saw Ishmael, the son of Hagar, scoffing. Now, scoffing in and of itself is not a problem. What was a problem is that Sarah saw him scoffing. And the definition of scoffing is contemptuously ridiculing or mocking someone or something. The amplified version states that Ishmael scoffed at Isaac. All right. And the RSV version says that Ishmael and Isaac were playing together, which could mean that Ishmael mocked Isaac while they were playing. And Paul makes a reference to this incident in Galatians 4 verses 28 and 29 when he writes, Now we brethren as Isaac was are children of the promise. But as he who was born according to the flesh then persecuted him who was born according to the spirit, even so it is now. So according to Paul's reference, Ishmael was definitely mocking, ridiculing and persecuting Isaac. Either way, Sarah had a problem with Ishmael scoffing. Okay, verse 10. Therefore, she said to Abraham, cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, namely Isaac. What was Sarah's answer to her problem? To get rid of Ishmael, send him away from the presence of her and her son. Sarah created a problem when she gave Hagar as wife to Abraham and now she wanted the problem gone. However, since the problem was Abraham's son, the only way she could get rid of the problem was by Abraham. He was the only one who could solve her problem for her. That's why she said to Abraham, cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, namely Isaac. It's interesting to the emphasis that Sarah places on the words, my son, and then she states Isaac's name. Could that mean that she at one time acknowledged Ishmael as her son? Because remember, the whole idea was to get a child by Hagar. That, that was the whole idea to start with. So could she have at some point acknowledged Ishmael as a son? Could it also mean that now that she had given birth to a man child and that that man child was not weaned and could be considered an heir to Abraham, that she wanted no rivals to her son's inheritance? Consider this. Abraham is old, 100 years, 102 years. Sarah's old, 92. And Isaac is a toddler two, three, four, a toddler. There's no guarantee that either Sarah or Abraham would live to see Isaac grown to adulthood, to be given his inheritance. Ishmael, on the other hand, was almost grown already. And he would be in the prime position to take everything that was Abraham's, especially considering that he was the firstborn son of Abraham. And as the firstborn son, he would be entitled to a double portion of Abraham's possessions. So if you look at this situation through these lenses, it can help us to understand Sarah's adamance in sending Ishmael far away from her and her son Isaac. And also her emphasis on calling Ishmael the son of the bond woman. 
She is deliberately making a distinction between herself and Hagar and between their sons. She is deliberately forgetting that she gave Hagar as wife to Abraham, not a concubine. And as such, she should not have been called a bond woman. All right. She's deliberately denigrating Hagar in the sight of Abraham as she makes this statement. Any questions about what I covered so far? Any questions? Okay. Verse 11. And the matter was very displeasing in Abraham's sight because of his son. But God said to Abraham, do not let it be displeasing in your sight because of the lad or because of your bondwoman. Whatever Sarah has said to you, listen to her voice. For in Isaac, your seed shall be called. Yet I also will make a nation of the son of the bondwoman because he is your seed. Amen. Now, Sarah has put her request to solve her problem before Abraham. But Abraham is not pleased with Sarah's request. Not only that, he's distressed by it. And as the, as the, as the word also said, he's grieved by it. I mean, think about this. Abraham was a man with two sons, a man who waited a long time to have any sons at all. And now his wife, Sarah, wanted him to send one of his sons away. It didn't matter to him that one was by Hagar, a bondwoman, and his wife, and the other by Sarah, his wife of many years. Both of them were his. Both of them were were his sons, so why would he want to send one away? Evidently, Abraham in his distress prayed about it. He went to God concerning his dilemma. And the word in verse 12 says, God said to Abraham, do not let it be displeasing in your sight because of the lad or because of your bondwoman. Whatever Sarah has said to you, listen to her voice. And for an Isaac, your seed shall be called. Can you imagine Abraham's initial response to this? His agony over letting go of one of his sons? How the pain in his heart in not seeing one of his sons grow every day was weighing him down? There was some consolation in knowing that Isaac was the son through whom the promise of God would be fulfilled. However, there was still the empty space that it, of his other son, Ishmael, in his life. However, the Lord knowing Abraham's pain and agony tells him in verse 13 yet i will also make a nation of the son of the bondwoman because he is your seed god tells him although you won't see it yourself i will make a nation of your son ishmael why because he is your abraham's seed or offspring remember Yahweh told Abraham in Genesis 12, verse 12, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. <coughs> and then in Genesis 13 and 16, I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth. So that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. And then again in Genesis 15, he said, look toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. So. Therefore, since Ishmael is Abraham's seed, he too will be a great nation. One other thing. Notice that Yahweh told Abraham, do not let it be displeasing in your sight because of the lad or because of your bondwoman. We talked about the lad, the son of Abraham by Hagar. <coughs> what about the bondwoman? Why would the Lord speak to Abraham? about being displeased concerning Hagar. Remember in Genesis 16 and three, then Sarai, Abraham's wife took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian and gave her to her husband, Abraham to be his wife. Hagar was his wife and the mother of his firstborn son. And so in spite of the circumstances surrounding the conception of that son, he laid down with this woman who was given to him as wife and made a child with her. And if for no other reason, he would not want harm to come to her for the sake of the child. Remember, Ishmael is between 16 to 18 years old now. Not quite a man, but no longer a little boy. 
He and his mother have been a part of Abraham's life for quite a while. Who knows what feelings he had towards Hagar, his second wife, and the mother of his firstborn son. Could this be the reason that Yahweh, the Most High God, who knows all and sees all, referred to her when addressing Abraham concerning Sarah's request? Could the existence of his feelings towards Hagar be another reason why Sarah asked him to send Hagar away? Hmm. Something to think about. All right. Verse six, verse 14. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and putting it on her shoulder, he gave it and the boy to Hagar and sent her away. Then she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water in the skin was used up, and she placed the boy under one of the shrubs. Then she went and sat down across from him at a distance of about a bow shot. For she said to herself, let me not see the death of the boy. So she sat opposite him and lifted her voice and wept. So after speaking to God about the matter concerning Ab um, Ishmael and Hagar, Abraham gets his answer from God. He rises early the next morning and prepares provisions for Hagar and Ishmael, bread and a skin of water. Check this. Abraham puts the provisions on Hagar's shoulder. He hands his son Ishmael to Hagar and then sent Hagar away. Really? Why didn't he give separate provisions to Ishmael? Ishmael was of an age where he could have carried his own provision. Why only to Hagar? Glory be to God. I don't know what just happened. <laughs> Glory be to God. And um, so, why wouldn't he give provisions to Ishmael as well? I guess we'll never know. But if I were to speculate, I would say he sent Hagar away and not Ishmael. He only placed Ishmael in her keeping. But it was Hagar he sent away. Because it says, then she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. Also consider this. Abraham had in mind the whole entire time the promise from God concerning Ishmael. He knew Ishmael was actually in the hands of Yahweh. But it came to pass as they were wandering in the wilderness that the skin of water was used up. Without water, no one can survive. Ishmael was a teenager, a growing boy, with a growing boy's appetite. And if Hagar is like most mothers, she gave most of the water to her son. And when there was no more, she did not know and she did not know where to get a refill. She knew that their time was limited. She probably searched for water and couldn't find any. And when her son was at death's door, she took him and placed him in the coolest place that she could find under a shrub. And she went far enough away not to hear his cries, but close enough to keep an eye on her, on him. Even in her distress, she was keeping an eye out so that no other harm came to him. Then she lifted her voice and wept. Notice it doesn't say that she called out to the Lord, only that she lifted her voice and wept. She was wailing, y'all, as only a mother could over a dying child. Mm. She forgot about El Royai, the God who sees me. She forgot about the promise spoken to her concerning her son in Genesis 16, verse 10. I will multiply your descendants exceedingly so that they shall not be counted for multitude. She forgot all about that because she was a mother in distress concerning her child. Saints of God, no matter how distressing your situation is, remember to seek the Lord. As it says in Psalms 121 verses 1 to 1 and 2, I will look, lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, creator of heaven and earth. Glory be to God. And then in Matthew 7, 7 and 8, it says, ask and you, it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks find and to him who knocks it will be open. 
And in Mark eleven twenty four, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Hagar didn't do none of that. She didn't cry out to the Lord. She didn't remember who had saw her. She remembered none of that. All right. Verse 17. And God heard the voice of the lad. Then the angel of the, a God called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, What ails you, Hagar? Feel not, for God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad and hold him with your hand, for I will make him a great nation. Like I said, Hagar did none of those things. However, Ishmael did. For the word says God heard the voice of the lad. All right. And when he heard the voice of Ishmael, then the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and asked her, what ails you, Hagar? Let's read between the lines a little. Ishmael calls out, God hears him. Then the angel comes to Hagar. Why? Because Ishmael is in no condition to help himself. The help available to him is his mother, Hagar. But she's wailing and weeping. So the angel is sent to Hagar so that she can get up to help Ishmael. Be first, he has to get her to stop wailing and weeping. So he asked her, what ails you, Hagar? That got her attention. She is not able to do something other than weep. She's listening. The angel goes on to say, fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. God heard Ishmael and sent help to his mother so that she can help her son. Children of God, know that sometimes you are the answer to someone else's prayer. They're calling out and the Lord sends you to help in answer to their prayer. The angel gives Hagar instructions. Arise, lift up the lad and hold him with your hand. In other words, stop wailing and start walking. Stop weeping and start working. Get up and get moving. Why? For I will make him a great nation. She is reminded of the promise that she was given the last time she was in the wilderness. In Genesis 16 and 10, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly and they shall not be counted for the multitude. Say to God, remember, God is a promise keeper. He gives his word and it will go forth. Any questions? Any questions at all? No, I just have a comment, Dolores. All this time I thought, hey, God, it made it seem like he was a baby when they left. That he wasn't, he wasn't a teenager. I always thought he was a baby because we put him underneath the bush, you can't, you know. No, no. Uh, now he's a, thank you for clearing that up. He's a Amen. big guy. Amen. He was a teenager. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. All right. And we get that timetable in, in Genesis itself. It says when um, Ishmael was born, he was 86. Then it tells you that Ishmael was 13 when, I, when Abraham circumcised him. So then if Abraham was 99 when he circumcised Ishmael and Ishmael was 13 and then he was 100 when Isaac was born, then Ishmael was 14 when Isaac was born. You just got to put the numbers together and there it is. But he was a teenager. He was not a child, not a, not a little boy at all. Okay. Hagar was verse 19. I didn't read it. I'm sorry. Let me write it. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the skin with water and gave the lad a drink. So God was with the lad and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. <laughs> he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran and his mother took a wife from him from the land of Egypt. Hagar was so busy wailing and weeping that she didn't see the well of water. God had to open her eyes for her to see. How many times have you looked for something all over? To find that it was in plain sight the whole time. I know I have. Looking for something. I'm all over the place. And then I come back and there it is. Right there in front of my face. All right. We need to always ask the Lord for eyes to see and to perceive. And ears to hear and understand. Along with a heart to receive what is revealed. When Hagar's eyes were open. She saw the well 
of water. And then she got up and went to fill the skin and took the water to her son for him to drink. After that, God was with the lad, meaning the Lord put a hedge of protection around him so that the promise to Abraham and to Hagar would come to pass. He grew into an adult, settled and lived in the wilderness of Paran, probably right near the well of water. He became an archer or a hunter with bow and arrow. And Hagar took for him an Egyptian wife. So ends the saga of Hagar and Ishmael. God did not forget his promise to Hagar concerning her son. He made the same promise to Abraham and repeated it again to Hagar in her time of distress. At a time when things seemed the most hopeless and Hagar felt totally helpless, the Lord sent his angel to give to save Hagar and her son. The promise came to pass for the genealogy of Ishmael's descendants is listed in Genesis 25 verses 12 to 18. A reminder to us in the kingdom of God, Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good for those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. Amen. Amen. So ends my lesson. I got one more thing to say, though. Um, it just came to mind when I was doing it. Remember, God told Abraham, don't be distressed for the lad and the bond and your bond servant. He didn't call them by name. All right. Because that union wasn't in his will. He wasn't going to ignore it because um, Ishmael was Abraham's seed. But because it wasn't in his will, he didn't want Abraham to think of her as anything other than a bond woman and the child as a lad. It, it, he wasn't in the plan that God had for Abraham. He wasn't a part of the promise that God had for Abraham. And so that is the reason for the Lord referring to her as the bondwoman and add to Ishmael as the lad. Just in case you were wondering for, about that, I just wanted to put that in there. Any questions about today's lesson? Any comments about today's lesson? None. Okay. And I'm going to make one more suggestion uh, before I end my recording. Um, Reverend Sherry Jones, Sheree Jones gave a message about Hagar on Women's Day at Christ Fellowship. It, it was in November. I want to say it was the third Sunday in November. I suggest you go take a look at that. She, she preaches this story like nobody else. And, and it was very inspiring. As a matter of fact, I remembered it and went back and looked at it. Um, looked at it. So um, that's it. If nobody else has any questions, if nobody else has comments. All right. Okay, I have a comment. I sat in a Bible class uh, <laughs> a couple of months with uh, St. Paul's and they were discussed. Um, the person was discussed in Hagar. And they were putting all kinds of things in it. And, you know, and I was listening to it. They were saying, well, Abraham and Hagar had this thing going on for years and years. And saying, where are they getting that from? You okay, know? well, here, let me, I, I'm going to interrupt you for a second. I don't know about years and years, but I know that they were husband and wife for at least the, the time from the time that Ishmael was conceived until she he sent her away. So if he's talking about years and years in that context, it could be that because they did have a relationship. And who's to say that once, I, I'm going to say this, this is just me, who's to say that once that she conceived that they didn't try and do that again? <laughs> you never know. I mean, she was his wife. So who's to say they wasn't busy a few more times with no success? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> any any oh. other <laughs> anything else? <laughs> anything else, Barbara? <laughs> so now you see where he might have gotten that from? I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the end of my lesson. Let us pray out so we can end this. So those that are getting ready to go to church can get ready to go to church. Um, I need somebody to pray. I'm going to pick on Sherry. 
Sherry, I'm going to pick on you. <laughs> yes, you're going to pray us out today. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us here today. We thank you for the lesson that you taught us. We thank you for having Mr. Loris on the line. We ask that you shield our family, our friends, all our loved ones under your blood and protect us in this time of need with this pandemic, Heavenly Father. A lot of us have been touched by this and we pray that you heal all that is sick. I ask that you bless my pastor, our pastor, David Kelly and his wife and his family mm -hmm. and put them underneath your shield and your blood. Mm -hmm. In Jesus name, we pray. Amen. 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 <laughs>